I think the main, the main challenges after the peace agreement um, have been actually implementing the, 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 the main strands of the agreement, some of which were relatively easily done, police reform, demilitarisation, others around establishing a political system, uh, a, a local government, was much more, has been much more challenging. There have been periods when the political parties would, would not work together in government. Um, there was really only in 2007 when we got the government up and running, but then in 2017 it collapsed. Um, and I think the basis is really that we, we are still a very divided society. Um, we've, we've agreed not to keep shooting each other and bombing buildings and, and things like that, but we, we, we don't have a consensus on what people want. Half the population want to be part of the United Kingdom, about half the population want to be part of a united Ireland. And there's, there's very little agreement between them. So we have very strong divisions. So political parties are from one ethnic community or the other. People go to school in the segregated, segregated schools. They live in segregated areas. So Catholics live in one area, Protestants live in another area. They obviously go to different churches, they often play different sports. So they, it's, it's still a very, heavily segregated society in, in some areas and that feeds through into a sense of instability um, and that's we, we've not really yet been able to address those very deep divisions. There are certain scenarios that I could see in the future. In immediacy, no, no. There's, the, the factors that led to the, the military conflict in the first place have been addressed. The discrimination, the inequalities have largely been addressed. Um, and there's, there's no appetite for, for, for armed conflict. There's no support for it. and There's not really the conditions for it. Now, there are some circumstances where you, I could project. Um, one, the one new issue that's emerged has been Brexit, and Brexit is uh, a, a different issue in Northern Ireland from other parts of the UK because of, of the border. And one of the successes of the peace process had been to make the border virtually irrelevant. It was much more of an administrative border than a, a national border. You could cross the border without knowing, knowing you'd really crossed it. Now it's become a very real issue. The majority of people in Northern Ireland voted to remain in the EU, uh, but probably a majority of Protestants voted to leave and Catholics voted to, to stay. So it's opened up the divisions and it's um, opened up questions about whether Northern Ireland should join the United, uh, the United Ireland rather than remain in the UK. So that before the Brexit referendum result, the the issue of the border was, was dead, effectively, for a long time, but now it's a very live issue. And I can see a scenario where that starts to become much more of an issue that the possibility of Northern Ireland going into United Ireland, because nearly a half of the people will, will not support it. I do think there are certain lessons you can apply from, from Northern Ireland because it, it was about addressing a sustained conflict. And for me, we can look at it from, say, the peace agreement was signed in 1998. Well, to get to 1998, we had three and a half years of heavy negotiations, political discussions. But even before that, there'd been a lot of work being done. So you go back to 1972, you can start to see a lot of peace building work, a lot of dialogue discussions going on. So I think you can say moving from a conflict to peace takes, takes a long period of time. And if you're going to, to sustain it, you need to be committed to that process. You need to be willing to engage in dialogue with people. And you need to make sure the process is inclusive, that everybody has a chance to speak and to be heard. If you start to be selective about keeping people out, that will create problems at some stage. So 
Although there had been conversations in the 1970s and 1980s, they were not inclusive enough. They were still, some people were still being excluded. And it was only in, in the 1990s that everything came together and there was a possibility of including all the key people. Uh, and then engage, willing to, everybody being willing to engage in dialogue to reach a solution, to find some form of compromise. So I think those are the kind of lessons, you know, be committed, it's going to take a long time, talk to everybody, don't exclude people, um, and, and just stay with it, and you, you will get there in the end.